Okay, I want to talk to you about today about something very small, but very important. And some of you might be thinking, um, seriously, like we came today to hear about dental floss? And no, I'm not going to talk to you about dental floss, even though it is small and it is important. And if I can just put a plug in, please floss. It's, just get all up in there. Don't skip a night. Just get it done. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk about something else. And this little video will help introduce what our topic is. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächters. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Have you guys heard that before? I love that idea. I never really get tired of it. That's what I want to talk to you about today. That's my question for you. What are you thinking about? Every single person thinks. Everybody has thoughts. It doesn't matter where you're from, what religion you are, what language you speak, how much money you have, where you grew up. If you're tall, short, funny, skinny, it doesn't matter. Everybody thinks. But not everybody takes advantage of the power of their thoughts. In fact, I think probably very few people do. I love this quote by President uh, Brigham Young. He said, the greatest mystery a man ever learned is to know how to control the human mind and bring every faculty and power of the same in subjection to Jesus Christ. Or in other words, to be thinking about the things that the Savior wants us to be thinking about. This is the greatest mystery we have to learn while in these tabernacles of clay. Okay, I want to invite you to think of an invention. Something that has totally changed your life for the better. And now that you have access to it, you couldn't live without it. You have something in mind? Did any of these make your list? Your laptop, as I walked in today, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, we didn't even have computers practically when we came to school. Like you were lucky if one roommate had a big old honking computer and you could hop on it. Now everybody carries their laptops all over. And I couldn't live without mine. I love my laptop, my camera, your cell phone. I bet you couldn't go a day without your cell phone. Well, anybody who knows me know that, knows that my very favorite invention ever is the washing machine. It does so much good for me, and I think it's so important that I included it in our family pictures. <laughs> and um, we went on this awesome hike together to the top of Zion's, and yeah, it was heavy, and the dolly was just super, it wore me out, but we bonded, it was awesome. And you're gonna go on vacation, so why not take your washing machine with you? And don't lean over and ask your neighbor if that's real, because I Photoshop those. Don't embarrass yourself. Okay, those are all Photoshop. Um, but every single one of those inventions, everything that happens in our life for good can be traced back to one thing, and it's the same thing. A thought. Someone thought of the camera. Someone thought of the car. Someone thought of toilet paper. And thank goodness they did. Um, all can be traced back to that very same thing. Um, I love this quote by David O. McKay. He said, the kind of life you live, your disposition, your very nature, will be determined by your thoughts, of which your acts are but the outward expression. Thought is the seed of action. Thoughts make us what we are. Who knows what potential is sitting in this room? And with your interest in business and other things, what you will go on to do. No one really knows. Maybe, maybe you have an inkling of it. Certainly God knows what you're going to become and what you're going to do. But make no mistake about it. Everything that you do will begin with the way that you think. And everything that comes from you, good or bad, will begin with the way that you think. And I've been studying the power of our thoughts for several years now. And about three years ago, I heard a woman say that on average, we think 
over 300 negative thoughts a day. And when she said that, I immediately wanted to know if it was true. So I decided to conduct an experiment. I went and bought myself a little handheld clicker. You know you've seen them in various places. You can keep track of things on them. You count. <clears throat> and I decided to count my negative thoughts. I was going to find out if I really had 300 negative thoughts a day. So the morning that I was going to begin my experiment, I explained to my family what I was going to be doing so that when they saw this little clicker in my hand or around my wrist or my arm, in my purse, on the counter, they would know what I was doing. And we got in the car to drive carpool. And I put my clicker on the panel in between the two front seats. And my daughter Meg, who was nine at the time, from the back seat, reached up, grabbed my clicker, looked at it, and goes, whoa, you have eight negative thoughts already, Mom? Holy cow, that is a ton. And I picked up my clicker and clicked. <laughs> like, that's annoying. So then I decided, <laughs> I don't want anyone to be able to see. So I covered it up with a little piece of masking tape. And I decided I would look at it every night. At the end of the day, I would pull it back and see how many clicks I had so that nobody could peek at it during the day. And I couldn't try and be like an overachiever and get like four or 500 clicks <laughs> in a day. So I began clicking, and I clicked for anything that wasn't positive or uplifting. Um, for example, we had just gotten a dog. <clears throat> we got a puppy. I didn't want a dog. I was the only one in the house who didn't want a dog. And I found myself clicking, clicking, clicking for that dog. Um, I took it with me one night to the movies. And I stuck it in my pocket. And during the movie, I found myself reaching down into my pocket and clicking. And at the end of the movie, I thought, I'm just curious. How many times did that movie make me think something negative? I pulled it back over 40 times. And it was a good reminder to me that um, I get to choose what is positive and uplifting for me to put in my mind. The ratings might tell me it is, but it may not actually be. And it was just a good reminder to me. And I am a little embarrassed to say that I did click one night on date night. My husband and I out to dinner. Date night's supposed to be fun. There I am, just clicking away. Had it in my pocket. And it was because I was complaining. We were sitting there over dinner, and I was saying things like, the house is a mess. The kids are driving me crazy. I haven't had five seconds to myself today. I have nothing cute to wear. My hair is frizzy. The visiting teachers didn't come. I stubbed my toe. My lesson for Sunday is not ready. On and on and on and on. There I'm clicking, clicking. I don't think I would have even realized or noticed how much I was complaining unless I'd had to be responsible for it. Because obviously, to say it, I had to think it first. So I had to click. Now, I am sure I missed some of the negative thoughts, because this is as scientific as it gets for me. And I didn't take it everywhere with me. I mean, for instance, I didn't take it to church. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> People be like, what are you doing? And I say, well, I'm counting my negative thoughts. <laughs> and when I saw how many Cheerios your family dropped, I judged you, so I had to cook myself. <laughs> and I'd be like, don't worry, I didn't cook you for all of them, just the ones that you stepped on. <laughs> anyway, I am sure that I miss some of my negative thoughts, because at the end of a week of keeping track of how many clicks I had in every day, my highest in a day was 145. So if what she said is true, 300 a day is the average. Well, then I missed some. But something really interesting and unexpected happened. I woke up um, at, after about a week clicking. I woke up early in the morning like I usually do. I went downstairs to study. I sat on the couch and I thought to myself, I am depressed. I feel sad. I feel discouraged. So I started thinking back over the week. What had happened? What had changed? Who said something to me? What was different? And I realized nothing was different. My circumstances had not changed one bit. And then it occurred to me, it was my experiment. Was it possible that giving recognition to my negative thoughts simply by clicking was giving them enough power to completely change my mood? That very day, I decided to switch. 
if counting and focusing on my negative thoughts could make me feel that way, was it pos possible that if I counted my positive thoughts, I would not only you know, swing from this far negative to feeling positive again, or would I feel like more positive than I'd ever felt in my whole life? So I switched and I started counting my positive thoughts. Everything I could think of. Um, my very first day, I counted 321 things. I clicked 321 times. I clicked for things like, most of them centering around gratitude. I'm grateful for milkshakes and the mountains and my family and my clothes and the dog would occasionally get a click and the scriptures and the temple and all sorts of things. And it was amazing how much better I felt focusing on the positive. By day four, I peeled back the masking tape and I had clicked 1,262 times. I am here to tell you today that not only did I come back to feeling normal, but I felt more positive than I had ever felt in my entire life. I set goals that I don't think would have even occurred to me to set unless that my mind had been in that place. One of them was charting on the Christian billboard charts. No Mormon has ever done that. There's so many barriers against us. And yet, why not? My mind was in that kind of place. Why not try to do the impossible? And by November, we had. We charted at number six. We broke the top 10. And this is going to sound a little cheesy, but I took this thing on the treadmill with me. And I ran with it in my hand. And every time I got tired, which is like one minute into it, I would pick up my clicker and start clicking and just tell myself, you can do this. You are strong. Keep going. This is building your heart and your lungs and your muscles. And I ran further and longer that week than I had in 20 years because my body was doing what my mind told it to do. It was amazing. I thought back over my week. Again, nothing had changed in my circumstances except for the way that I was thinking and what I was focusing on. I love this quote by Grant Von Harrison. He said, to a great extent, we accomplish what we think about. Your thoughts, more than anything else, will be the determining factor in what you accomplish during your life. Now, typically at this point, uh, when I'm speaking about the power of positive thinking, I continue in more detail about how to do that and what the effects are. But since this is the Entrepreneur Lecture Series, um, I'll go in just a little bit different direction. I want to talk about um, three things that, have, that I've learned along the way. Uh, in recording CDs, we're in the process of working on our 10th CD. And um, I have started, almost by default, a little online business that talks about clickers and sells clickers. And I'd love to tell you about how that got started, too. So if we have time. But I do feel like I want to tell you this story, because it illustrates these three points. These are things that are solidified in me as I have approached things I've never done before, tried things I was terrified of, um, and in, in music, you know, in branding, uh, Hillary Weeks' brand and what I've, I've been doing, these have all played into it. And if you were hoping for business type things that I've learned, you've picked the wrong person. Because in this case, these three things I want to talk about today are all spiritually based. But the first one is to follow the Spirit. He can guide you. He can help you in your goals. The second one is the Lord cares about the details of our lives. He just does. It doesn't matter how big or small. He cares. Remember that quote by Elder Cornish a couple conferences ago when he said that Heavenly Father loves us so much that the things that are important to us become important to him simply because he loves us. Well, if you're going to invent something or you're going to start a business, believe me, he cares. And he will help you with every detail of it. And the third one is don't let fear stop you. Oh, my goodness. I was terrified to take the stage I loved writing music, I loved recording it, I loved singing it, but just not in front of people. And that comes along with it. It's hand in hand. If you're going to sing and do a CD, you've got to perform. And it would just, um, I was almost out of commission with how scared I used to be 
to perform and to speak in front of people. But let me tell you this story that illustrates these principles, and then we can go back and talk a little bit about this new website and answer a couple questions should you have any. Last year, I began writing music for a new CD. Um, it was in January. I knew I was supposed to write this CD, but I'd only given myself five months to write 11 songs, a full CD. And I usually give myself uh, well over a year to write that much music. But again, I knew I was supposed to do it. I knew it was supposed to release last fall. And so I began writing. And as I did, Heavenly Father was so kind. He sent so many of the songs right away. By the beginning of May, I had written all but two of the songs. And one night, we knelt in family prayer. And my daughter, Meg, was asked to pray. She was 10. And she looked at me and she said, um, Mom, I know that you have two more songs that you are supposed to write, so I'll pray that Heavenly Father will help you write them. And she did. In her prayer, she asked Heavenly Father to help me write them, and she asked that they would be good, which I thought was very polite of her. And then this is my, uh, the best part. She asked that they would be my favorites. And my prayers did not sound like that when I was 10 years old. I was more like, um, can you help my mom to bring home some ice cream? And like, my brother's not to eat it all. Like, those are my 10-year-old prayers, but no, no, that, not hers. And her little prayer echoed in my mind over and over again. The very next morning, I wrote one of the songs. It was done just that fast. So I still had one song to go, and I had the idea for it. I wanted to call it Living Proof. We're living proof that Heavenly Father knows us and loves us. He heals hearts, we know, because he has healed ours. He answers prayers. We know because he has answered ours. We are living proof of him and his goodness and his love and his hand in our lives. I thought it was a great title. So I started writing on it the minute it came to my mind. And I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And the paper just didn't seem to have anything to say. And my pen did not lose one ounce of meaningful ink. I was not one note or one lyric closer to writing this song. And so my prayers intensified, and I began fasting a little more frequently. We went on a family vacation in July, and I still didn't have the song written. So normally I would sleep in and take advantage of the extra time, but at this time there was a song to be written. So I woke up early every morning before everybody else and I wrote, and I didn't make any progress. And I was so frustrated. I mentioned it to my husband, and he said, maybe you have to wait for this song to come so that when it does come, you know that it was the Lord who sent it. Well, just a couple weeks before we were supposed to go to Nashville and record this album, I still didn't have the song. So I asked for a priesthood blessing. And in the blessing, I was promised that the song would come, and it would come in the moment that the Lord wanted it to. I went to Nashville. No song. I went for two days and recorded, and every night in my hotel room I would write. And I still wasn't making any progress. And we were running out of time. We were down to one night left and then the next day in the studio. And that's when the Lord stepped in and started working miracles. A friend of ours was supposed to fly out for the last day of recording, but her flight got canceled. And instead of flying and picking her up like 8 in, in the evening, she was going to have to leave at midnight and fly all through the night and arrive the next morning. So all of a sudden, a window to write had opened up. And I still feel bad about it. But listen, I wasn't the one coordinating all the miracles, right? So we, my producer and I called an, a Nashville songwriter named Lowell Alexander to see if he wanted to write with us. And he agreed. So we drove 45 minutes out to his house, and I was exhausted. I wasn't sure if I had one ounce of creativity left in me. All I really wanted to do was just to go back to my hotel room and sleep. But I had tried to write this song 87 and a half times, and I wasn't giving up now, not when it was literally my last chance. So Tyler, the producer, and I and my husband got in the car and we drove to Lowell's house. We got there about 8.30. By 9 o'clock we started writing, and at 11 o'clock, Living Proof was finished. It had come. The Lord had kept his promise. For me, it was my very own parting of the Red Sea. And was what I was asking for life-threatening? No. But was it life-changing? Absolutely. And I think it's in those very moments, those types of miracles, those answers, when we are led personally to God, when he says, I care about what you care about. And make no mistake, he cares about what you're doing right now. 
what you are headed to do, the businesses you're going to pursue, the businesses you will start, and the way that you will change the world. That's why you're here, and that is what you're doing, and that is what you are preparing for. That song came in the 11th hour. It came when I least expected it, but it came. And it was one more reason that I was living proof of his love. So, follow the Spirit. The Lord is in the detail of your lives. And don't let fear stop you in what you're doing. Just be brave. Just try. And surround yourself with people who know more than what you know. My husband graduated from BYU in accounting. And he helps me with so many things that I want to do business-wise. And I've called Lisa more times than I can count saying, what do you think about this? Is this a good idea? Which direction should I go? I met with Jeanette Bennett, who you met with last week, and asked her opinion on things. Surround yourself with people who know more than you do, and then you don't have to be afraid. They'll help. Okay, we have just a couple of minutes. Did you want to do questions, or do you want me to talk about the... the, I have 15 more minutes? Oh, okay, I thought you... If you want to extend questions... Okay. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit about this website. Um, when I started clicking, I, th- I wondered, like, would anybody else be interested in this? Is this of interest to anybody else? So I had flown to Nashville, and I spoke to a group of about 2,000 people, and I spoke in the morning about clicking. I was just sharing the experience. At, by lunchtime, I had had tons of people come up and say, we want a clicker. So I got on my, the phone to my husband here in Utah during the lunch break and said, you just call up China and get us some of them clickers. I don't know how you do it, but call them. See if China has any of them clickers and them wristbands. So he did. He got some clickers. We ordered them in. And I put them together. I sat in my living room just by myself watching TV, putting these little clickers together. And we thought, we called Desert Book and said, how about if I bring clickers to the next time I speak? And we were going to go to Fresno, California. And they said, okay. And I said, how many do you want me to bring? 240. I was like, okay, but... I got them all ready. I got the 240 ready. And I'm like, I'm going to be bringing 240 clickers home with me. This is going to be so embarrassing. I should have been clicking, right? Telling myself positive things. Well, um, I spoke in the morning. And there was a break after I spoke, like a 20-minute break. And in 10 minutes, 240 of the clickers were sold. They were gone. And more people wanted them. And so I kept taking them to the events. And every time, the store manager would say, well, bring more. Let's try 30%. Let's bring 30% of the people who are there. Let's make sure they could buy a clicker. And then 50%. And then this last time, I went to Portland a couple of weeks ago, and there were going to be 3,300 women there. She said, let's just shoot the moon. Bring 2,500 clickers. We sold every single one. In the meantime, well, so what that told me is, yes, people want to know. People want to try it. People want to think positively. We all need a tune-up. Everybody can focus on their thoughts a little bit more and be a little bit more positive. Oh, that's good with your head right there. Lean back, because right now I'm getting a migraine from the thing. That's right. Okay, somebody put a piece of paper in front of it. Or can we just turn it off? Well, I might use it for one more quote. Okay. Or your your head was awesome in front of it. Okay. Um, So there was this, um, thank you. I mean, if you get a cramp, just have him just rub it. Just so. Okay. Um, okay, so in the meantime, another woman contacted me. She had taken 250 clickers to a girls' camp last summer. And the 250 young women and leaders clicked for a week of camp. And when they were done, they had clicked 330,952 times. They clicked when they hiked. They clicked when they complimented each other. She said it was the most incredible girls' camp she'd ever been at because it was just the most amazing positive energy there. And that's what you would expect with everybody focusing on the positive. That's what can happen wherever you are. If you're in an office, if you're in a classroom, if you're in a dorm, everything, if you're focusing on being positive, is more positive. When she told me that, it lit a fire under me. And I thought, if they could click 330,000 times in one week, then what if we set a goal to click a billion times? A billion positive thoughts. I mean, that kind of energy can certainly change people. It can change their circle of influence. It might even change the state they're in. 
who knows, maybe even the world. So I set up a website that was geared towards collecting clicks and selling clickers. Um, let me pull it up here for you and show you. But do keep in mind, since then, we're going to do some changes. And we've got lots of changes in the works. But this is what's running right now. And I will tell you that it made me so nervous to do something I had never done before, to set up a website and then to try to make phone calls to people, to get products in, positivity, positivity products, and do all these things. I, for like three months, woke up with hives every morning. I, that's not an exaggeration. Every morning I had some patch of hives somewhere because I was so anxious and worried about it. But I didn't let a few hives stop me. OK, so we are up to, um, you can't really see. How do I make this? Oh, yeah. I was trying to make it like, fit the screen better. but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do I do on that? 100? Maybe 75? Would that be better? I hope it shows it a little bit better. OK, so we're like almost at 1.6 million clicks. And people can come, enter their clicks um, each day. We have a limit. You can only enter up to 500. After that, it has to be approved, you know, because somebody already entered a billion. I was like, thanks a lot. So I had my husband do the math. We opened the website in March, and I had him do the math on the rate we're going and how soon we'll reach a billion. And he looked at me, and he's like, hmm, 600 years. I'm all, oh, OK, well, then my great, 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 super great grandchildren could be like the ones who like, see it happen. But I was um, not discouraged by it. We, you, I had to keep a blog all about positivity. Um, and you, people can come and order clicks. And lo and behold, people actually do. We have people come and order clicks, clickers every single day. And we've designed stickers to go on the clickers and have a new line of stickers coming out this week. And it's just been really fun. And then this little thing is going to turn into a video that explains clicking. And we just have some different changes that are coming up. But it opened up in March. I opened the site in March. And um, we have done about $50,000 in um, revenue. And that's just from a little girl who writes music who grew up in Alaska who likes to cook in the evenings. I mean, if I can do that, you guys can do anything. And that number is small to most people. But to me, I haven't lost money, haven't cost the family any money, and have had fun learning all about how to start a website, how to make phone calls, how to contact people, how to hire a designer, all just all sorts of things. And our next project, in, in, in addition to creating a video and updating the website, is to um, turn the clicker into a product that can sell on shelves. Because right now, if I go speak somewhere, then you can tell, because I get clicker orders from that area. Um, but I don't want to have to be responsible for the story and explaining to people how to help change their lives. So we're, we're designing a product that can sit on the shelves and it tells the story to them. And I don't have to be there. And right now we have clickers in 37 of the 50 states. And we have like four international countries who click. And it's just been really fun to um, start this website. But that's what I have to share today. And I guess if you want me to take questions or. Absolutely, I'll pull it up. Yeah, that's a great idea. So this video we made last fall um, to the song "Beautiful Heartbreak." It kind of tells it tells the story itself. Um, okay. Now will the audio come up? Okay. Okay. And then blow it up. Is that how I do it? All right. Oh, there wouldn't be audio quite yet. I had it all mapped out in front of me, knew just where I wanted to go, but life decided to change my plans and I found a mountain in the middle of my road 
You guys, that was Hillary at the piano singing. You guys only. <laughs> That's her. Wow, is that the song you were talking about that you wrote, or the, the one you wrote was Living Proof? That's the name of the other song. Two different okay. songs, yeah. Okay. Um, wow, that's, that's Living Proof right there. Um, one thing I have to tell you guys what, no, the $50,000, is that from the sale of the clicker? Uh -huh. the or clicker. other products that we have on there. Okay, so what are some other products? Mention those. Which, um, I, 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 I wanted to do the experiment. Yeah, we have uh, notebooks that I, there's this, this uber cool brand of notebooks and books that are all about positivity. So we sell their notebooks. They also have window cards, like 30 different little cards and you open them up and they just say something about gratitude or miracles or believe in yourself. And so these little cards that people can, can buy and just fill their lives with positivity. So That yeah. is great. So I love that Hillary singer, songwriter, scared to speak in front of people, wanted to just be in her own little corner recording songs, now goes around the world literally and, and speaks to groups and how she's been able to take, what's the name, the ancillary product, you guys remember that? It's gonna be on the quiz, right? Um, has been able to take this and made $50,000 off the clicker in the little books. That's, that's amazing and it's just gonna continue to explode. Um, let's, <coughs> let's take a few questions for Hillary. Hmm. Um, sometimes I co-write. Most of the time I write by myself. And the process is different every time. Sometimes I'll be doing the dishes and get a song idea. 
So I'll just run in and jot it down. Sometimes I start with lyrics. Sometimes I start with the music. Sometimes I have the title or the concept of the song. And so it's kind of different every time. Sometimes at the, I'm at the piano, sometimes I'm on an airplane. Just different every time. But she does, one thing I love about Hillary is she does quite often when she really needs a lot of inspiration, will go off on your own to like a cabin somewhere mm -hmm. so that she can just think in a quiet spot. So it's focused. Yeah, and it's, it's focused. more than 15 minutes at a time. Because being a mom, I have a few minutes here and a few minutes there. But believe me, I take advantage of those. And you can write an entire album in 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day. And you can do anything in that amount of time if you use, you use it well. So, but it's important to have your own time, too, to, to ponder it. Yes? What do you consider your greatest accomplishment? Um, for sure that um, I have a healthy, happy marriage and that my kids are happy and doing well. I have a daughter who's a freshman here at BYU and loving it, and then the other three at home in school. And, and even though I love doing this stuff, nothing would take the place of a good, happy, healthy family. Career-wise, what would you say? Um, uh, for me, it is when I get a letter in the mail that the music has touched the life of someone. I, I got a note this morning from someone who passed away on this last Thanksgiving. She had leukemia, and she left two young boys. They couldn't have been more than three and five, and they said that she listened to Stand Still, which is one of the songs that I wrote, every, like consistently all day long for the week leading up to her death. And to think that a song or music could have that kind of effect on her, or on anyone, um, that's what I love most about music. I love writing the, uh, the happy stuff, like Living Proof, but I have to write the stuff that finds us in our darkest places. I, I have to, because we all have those moments. And so every CD has the good stuff on it and the happy tap your toe stuff, and it all, also has the songs that reach out. Yeah, thank you. I have a question for you. Was that grand piano photoshopped in the field, or were you really playing? No, it? Just, and it wasn't. Oh, <laughs> wait, for the I'm cover joking. of the CD it's or no, this one? What you were playing. How oh, no, it's that, actually an interesting. It's not a grand piano. It's, it's not. an upright, it and they like got it from a little small piano shop in Amer Present Grove. And they brought the piano and they took the whole thing apart so that we could see all the hammers and oh all the strings going on. And then they put it back together, took it back to the shop, and someone bought it. And they've asked me to come sign it, but I just haven't had a chance. Oh my goodness. Hey, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Up here. Was there any particular experience that uh, inspired you to write that song you watched? That was co written, and the, uh, Tyler Castleton, who I co write with, brought that title. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing song. We've got to write that. So we wrote that one together. Oh, that's a great question. And not to sound cliche, but I just felt like it was what I was supposed to do. I just knew that's that's what I was supposed to be doing. And I had been told no in terms of like, hey, do you want to produce my CD, these songs? I'd been told no by every major uh, publisher in this industry. And so I was like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to do it. And then a little teeny tiny window opened up, and that's when the music career began. And I was prepared for it. I mean, I had studied music. I had recorded. I had songs ready. and. So when it came, I was ready for it, but all Heavenly Father needed was a little window. He didn't need the other publishers. I mean, they finally came around, and I produced through Deseret Book, which is the biggest one in our industry, but um, I had originally been told no by all of them, and just so just not stopping, just following what he wanted me to do. Well, you guys, let's give the biggest round of applause to this gallery mm -hmm. here.